Okay, so uh, let me sum up what we did and what our idea is. Um, we want to implement a reconstruction formula using that theorem, uh, which I've stated here again, where uh, so capital V convolution with F is R star, a small v convolution with G. So our idea is we take the data G, convolve it with uh, some specially um, crafted um, chosen function small v, apply the back projection and uh, what we get is an approximation to f. Um, capital V here is the back projection applied to small v and we already noted that uh, if v hat is if v is chosen as the delta distribution or equivalently v hat is chosen as 2 pi to the minus n over 2 then this um, then this algorithm will be exact for all functions f and the second thing was um, if we have an omega band limited function f and we have that uh, this um, equality is true, at least for norm of psi smaller than omega, omega the band limit, uh, then again, this uh, theorem will be exact. So this reconstruction formula will be exact. Okay, so uh, let's look into that in a little bit more detail. So what does that mean? Let's now choose v hat, capital V hat of psi as 2 pi to the minus n over 2. So uh, the question is, how do we have to choose small v? Well, the theorem we just proved tells us exactly that. So uh, we'll have to um, just insert capital V over here. And uh, we get for small v, we get the formula that small v of norm psi is one half, two pi to the one, um, one minus n over two. Uh, this is this one over here, brought to the other side. Norm psi to the n minus one, same thing here. And we have that two, uh, this two pi um, minus n over two for capital V hat. And uh, so we have to small choose small v hat as exactly this one over here. So uh, we can compute small v hat as one half two pi to the minus n two pi to the one half norm psi to the n minus one. Okay, so what does that mean for our reconstruction formula? So what we have to compute is R star, so the back projection applied to the convolution of V and G, that's this one over here. Now we do what we always do when we have a convolution, we go to Fourier space, uh, and this is the same as a G convolution with V, Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform, we apply the convolution theorem, and this is the same as R star applied to G hat times V hat times square root of two pi from the convolution theorem. Again, um, of course, the these are data functions. So, so the convolution and the Fourier transform is done only with respect to the second variable, which is one dimensional. So we have a square root of two pi here. Then we have uh, the inverse Fourier transform over here, and we need to apply the back projection. So um, what does that finally mean? Well, for, uh, in V hat, we have these, um, uh, these constants. So I plug, I uh, pull these out. And then we have R star, the back projection applied to what? Well, we need to take the, we need to take the Fourier transform of the data. And then we need to uh, multiply with uh, the absolute value of the argument times to the uh, times n minus to the n minus one. Well, that's exactly what Ries does. So uh, this is nothing. So apply, after taking out the all the constants over here, uh, we get that this is equivalent to just applying the Ries uh, operator to G. So uh, we have exactly this one over here. Constants here. Back, uh, back projection operator applied to the uh, uh, to the Ries operator. So that's that's for n my excuse me that's for n equals two. But that's uh, that's what we're interested in uh, anyway. It should be um, n minus one over here, but uh, that doesn't matter. 
1 minus n should be n, sorry. 1 minus n, so that's minus uh, 1 for n equals 2. Well, so uh, we get a reconstruction formula based on uh, the Ries operator, and that's exactly what we called uh, Fourier uh, filter back projection in one of the ancient lectures. So um, applying that formula for v hat equals to 2 pi to the minus n over 2 just gives us back projection back. And as we said, this is no help. It's exact, but it's no help because uh, the back projection operator is discontinuous. Okay, no, not the back projection, excuse me, the filter back projection is discontinuous. Okay, uh, now, um, but there was another thing. We assumed that f was omega band limited. Okay, so uh, let's now choose a filter function, phi of sigma, which should be one for absolute value of sigma smaller than one and zero for uh, absolute value of sigma larger than one. Now, uh, we said v omega hat of sigma um, as 2 pi to the minus n over 2 v hat of norm psi over omega. And uh, then you find if we do not have like over here, but equal, uh, then uh, this function, this v omega hat is, one, is um, 2 pi to the minus n over 2 for, um, for when its argument, when the norm of its argument is smaller than omega and uh, it's zero otherwise. So it satisfies the condition for exact reconstruction that uh, we that uh, we already um, that we already set up. So uh, we have that for this V omega, we have that F is V omega is the convolution of uh, capital V omega and F. And that means it's just the back projection of small V omega convolved with G. And uh, by the way, when you talk to engineers, this is exactly what they mean by filtered back projection. Uh, for, for them, um, filtering means convolution with a function. So this is exactly what this does. We take the data function G, we convolve with some function small v omega, apply the back projection. So that's a back projection of filtered data or filtered back projection. Um, we, we can see that um, what, what we'll get here is somehow a projection onto the set of, oops, onto the set of band limited functions. So um, if we take this to be discontinuous over here, then we're just cutting off the frequencies, we're just cutting off the image at some point. And we already saw in the numerical experiments uh, what that means. We got these ringing effects that were finally due to the Gibbs effect, which we also looked at in 1D. So uh, we would not like to do just a cutoff, so stop reconstructing the frequencies at some point, but probably we would like to smoothly go away. So uh, And uh, so it makes sense to require, not that it's exact, that the phi of sigma should be exactly one for sigma smaller, so absolute value of sigma smaller than one, which would mean that up to a certain point, the frequencies in the image are exactly reconstructed and zero for sigma uh, absolute value of sigma larger than one, which would mean that at this point they're completely thrown away. Uh, but there, it should maybe be a, a smooth transition zone. And uh, so uh, this is what is usually done in uh, reconstruction. So we also look at cases where the phi of sigma is not exactly one and exactly zero, but we have a smooth transition. And of course, then we do not get an exact reconstruction, but uh, at least we get an approximation. Okay, um, now uh, if we choose our v, uh, capital V omega hat in this form over here, then how do we have to choose small v omega hat? Well, again, we just plug in into the formula that we already proved. Same thing as before, only uh, this time, well, this was one in the in the last computation. Now we have this phi hat of norm psi over omega, and uh, well, we get a nice formula for v omega hat based on the Fourier transform of phi hat. 
Okay, um, now if we want to uh, compute um, not the Fourier transform of V omega, but uh, if we want to compute V omega itself, then we just have to do the inverse Fourier transform. So we get our function V omega by one half two pi to the minus n. Uh, that's uh, what comes out of here. So inverse Fourier transform of V omega hat that um, uh, that um, <laughs> there we have a factor of one over square root of two pi. So uh, this square root of two pi goes away. What's left of the omega hat is the one half over here, two pi to the minus n. That's what we have. And then the integral over r, uh, um, sigma, I replaced norm of psi by sigma here, sigma, uh, absolute value of sigma to the n minus one, phi hat of sigma over omega e to the i s sigma d sigma. That's just inverse Fourier transform. And since we assume that um, phi hat is zero or roughly zero for um, argument larger than one, um, we can restrict the integration here to the range of minus omega to omega. Okay, so uh, we get V omega just by inverse Fourier transform, and that's what I wrote down here. Now let's be even a little bit more concrete, and uh, let's uh, ask, okay, what if we choose the equal over here? So if we choose uh, phi of sigma as one for sigma smaller than, for absolute value of sigma smaller than one, and zero for absolute value of sigma larger than one, um, then uh, what does this boil, boil down to? So uh, what would be the value, what would be the function V omega that's computed? And luckily that can actually be done. So uh, excuse me, there's a um, phi hat of sigma, of course, should be one for absolute value of sigma smaller than one. Uh, and uh, so, so that would be the, the choice that I had above with the equal sign and not with roughly equal to. Okay, we do the computation, I think, for n equals 2. Then uh, the function v omega of s can be computed as 1 half 2 pi to the minus n, where n is 2, integral from minus omega to omega, sigma, uh, absolute value of sigma to the n minus 1, that's just absolute value of sigma, e to the i s sigma d sigma, and this one goes away over here um, because it's 1, right? Okay. Uh, now, this is the same, uh, now setting n equals to 2, then this is uh, 1 over 8 pi squared, Again, we observe that, uh, of course, sigma absolute value of sigma is an even function. The imaginary part of this guy here is odd. So uh, integrating from minus omega to omega, the imaginary part goes away. And all that's left is twice the real part from 0 to omega. So we have something like integral from 0 to omega sigma times cosine of s times sigma d sigma. Okay, and uh, now all we have to do is that's definitely school stuff, I think. So uh, if we have something like this, of course, what you do is partial integration. And uh, that's what I did here. And finally, you get to the result that we, we need to convolve with the function small v omega of s equal to omega squared over 4 pi squared. And you have this one here, sinc of s times omega plus 1 over omega squared s squared cosine of s times omega minus 1. So, uh, and, and it's, uh, um, that is uh, continuous, um, can be continued in a continuous way for s equals 0 and uh, then it, it's 1 half. Okay, uh, so if we have an omega band limited function f, we take the data function from the, from the computer tomograph, convolve with this small v omega, and apply that to the back projection, then we get our, our function f back. Okay, so this is an exact reconstruction formula when f is omega band limited. 
And you can easily see that it's continuous uh, because, uh, I mean, where did the con discontinuity come from in the filter back projection algorithm that we looked at first, where we multiplied with uh, the absolute value of the argument. We took the uh, f hat of xi uh, in the Ries operator and multiplied it with norm of xi. And um, well, uh, that's obviously unbounded. But uh, now here, what we do is we limit that multiplication to values of the Fourier transform smaller than for, uh, for, <laughs> to arguments of the Fourier transform smaller than omega. So we in in the maximum we multiply with omega, and uh, so there's no discontinuity. Uh, the um, everything is bounded, and so this is an, um, so these <laughs> this uh, is definitely a continuous operator and of course applying that to the continuous um, to the uh, continuous back projection is continuous again okay so we have um, um, a continuous reconstruction formula that's exact for band limited function for omega band limited functions and um, that uh, reconstruction formula was uh, uh, discovered in 1971 by, well, it's called Ramlak for uh, obvious reasons because uh, no one can pronounce these names. And uh, that is the filtered version that uh, that is used and um, which at least gives a hard filtered version of F in implementations. Um, as I said, um, this might not be a good, it might not be a good idea to actually choose this. And uh, I think we're going to look at some implementations and uh, we're going to see that uh, this, although it seems to be exact, it has some deficiencies and the problem is exactly what I already noted, just cutting off the frequencies uh, in uh, of an image means that uh, you get uh, typical errors, you, you get this ringing that I already pointed at, and to get rid of that, we use smooth transition functions, and uh, everything you can think of has actually been proposed here. One is the filter by Shep and Logan, which, uh, um, which proposes that phi hat of sigma is chosen as, as the sink of sigma times pi over two, I think for sigma smaller than one and zero else. And uh, um, I'm not going, you, for all of these choices, you can compute V, the co corresponding V omega like we did it above, but uh, we're not going to do that. Okay, uh, but I'm going to show you the results in some implementations. So finally, what do we have to do when we construct a new for a computer tomograph? First, we need, at the very first beginning, we need to choose an omega. So uh, we, uh, we require uh, um, functions, and we require that uh, omega band limited functions are exactly reconstructed or reconstructed by our algorithm. Next, we select a filter function phi, which um, corresponds to, um, to a convolution function V omega, and which can be computed from V omega hat. And we saw that, right? Uh, then of course, we need to measure the data. That's the point we didn't get look at. Uh, we need to compute the convolution of G and V omega. And finally, we need to do the back projection. So, uh, and the back projection gives us, well, exact reconstructions if F was actually band, band, uh, omega band limited. So this is a continuous reconstruction formula for band limited functions. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you some implementation of this, I think, just for fun. <laughs> 